In this video, I'm going to talk about how React events are different from the vanilla JavaScript's add event listener. And you will also understand why or when to use each of them depending upon the use case scenarios. So what is a JavaScript event listener? A JavaScript event listener is a function that gets called when a specific event occurs. In a React functional component, this is how we use an event listener. For example, let's add an onClick event. So adding an onClick event is easy in React. All you need to do is define your event handler function and attach it to your HTML element in line, like it's mentioned in the example below. And this is how we use it in vanilla JavaScript. From the code in the example below, first we create a variable named button and it stores a button node element through the document.getElementById selector. After that, we attach an event listener to the button by using button.addEventListener. The addEventListener function requires two arguments. First is the type of event you're looking for, which is the click event in this case. And the second argument is the function to trigger after the event has happened. But there is one additional thing we should do after that, and that is to remove an event listener when you're done using it. This is something we have to do manually in vanilla JavaScript. So far, after observing both the React way and vanilla JS way, the React way sure looks much simpler and shorter. But there are certain pros to using add event listener, some of which are it works in every browser, you don't need React to use it, and you don't need to import anything to use it. Now, the onClick in React is not specifically a React feature. OnClick is an inline event and this has been there since way before React. That code actually works, and events used to be written like that. React has adopted the same style of attaching events inline, but have added their own touch to it. All of React events are what we call synthetic events. Synthetic event is a wrapper which aims at reducing cross-browser compatibility issues. It also enhances the performance in React by a concept of pooling. Pooling means that whenever an event fires, its event data, which is an object, is sent to the callback. The object is then immediately cleaned up for later use. This is what we mean by pooling, where the event object is in effect being sent back to the pool for use in a later event. Now as we saw above, we had to remove the event listener in vanilla javascript by ourselves using the remove event listener function. So does react remove event listeners? Yes, they do. And the best thing about that is react does it for us, which leads to less code. This brings us to the question, so when do we use the add event listener while working in a React application? There are a few use cases where you need to implement your own add event listeners. This is usually because of a specific UI behavior that you or the designers want to achieve. An example is when you have to implement a model or a notification pop-up and you want to make it disappear when you click anywhere else but the pop-up itself. Let me know down in the comment section if you guys would want me to make a video building that and explaining you how it works. So in conclusion, neither approach is bad, but in React, my recommendation is to use React's on-click synthetic event because number one, it handles event pooling, number two, it handles removing event listeners for you, number three, it's better optimized, and number four, it's more efficient in event delegation. This doesn't mean never use custom event listeners, use it only when you can't do things with regular React events. So that's it for this video. If you enjoyed it and gained some value from it, don't forget to like and subscribe.